Very unique. Because of its type, it is particularly, in particularly good condition. The glyphs on the front of it tell the curators that it belongs to a woman whose name was Jed Monasson, and that she lived almost 3,000 years ago. It, is, it says that she was a musician, a chantress, in the temple of the sun god, Amun-Ra, probably played a simple rattle or concussion, uh, percussion instrument, <laughs> percussion instrument, and chanted music in special ceremonies. And her husband was the doorkeeper of the temple. So she wasn't a queen or a princess, but a very you know, privileged lady. About 3,300 years ago from granite, and it is a sculptor of the ancient Egyptian goddess Sekhmet, goddess of war and destruction. Come right around so you can see. Now, it was believed that Sekhmet rode into battle with the Pharaoh, passing on to him her anger and her power, making him a fierce warrior. Sekhmet was also interestingly known as the Lady of the Pestilence, and people prayed to her and honored her and made offerings to her to cure infectious diseases that might trouble the land. So of ancient Rome and the Roman Empire. Now, the Romans and the Greeks, the Greeks under Alexander the Great and then the Romans, gradually extended their power into what we think of as the Near East, the lands where, you know, there's Turkey, Persia, uh, Iran, uh, today, um, you know, Jordan, kind of down Syria, down through that region. And when they arrived in those regions, both the Greeks and the Romans were really impressed with the type of decorative art that they had not seen before, that they saw in this region, and that was mosaic. Mosaic is made from small pieces of stone, naturally colored stone, no, no artificial coloring added, arranged into patterns and even pictures, and sunk into mortar. This is of the Greek goddess Artemis. During much of the Roman Republic and Empire, the Romans were pagan in their religious practices, so that meant they had many gods. And a lot of them they adopted from the Greeks, and they often gave them Roman names. So Artemis was renamed Diana. And Artemis slash Diana was goddess of the hunt. See there, she's got her bow and her arrows. And as somebody who spent a lot of time hunting, she was very much associated with nature, represented in the flowers in the background. As we heard in the earlier sto story about the amethyst, she was the protectors of innocent young girls. And she was also seen as the twin sister of Apollo, god of the sun. So she was goddess of the moon. 